our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I bid you a warm welcome to this time of worship. This is Columbia United Methodist Church, and I am Pastor Mar Bruner, and it is such a joy and a privilege to worship with you today. We are children of the great I Am, the God of all creation who created us out of love for the sake of love. We are God's own, and what a glorious gift that is. I am so glad that we are able to gather together to pray and praise to the God of all creation, the God who holds our moments, our days, and everything in between. But now, friends, I invite you to quiet your hearts and your minds as we prepare for this time of worship with silent prayer. to join me by speaking the words to our opening prayer. They will appear on the screen. Grand designer of all things, the light and darkness, the dome in the midst of the waters, the sky and dry land, the vegetation, the seasons, the swarms of living creatures, birds and great sea monsters, creeping things and wild animals and us. All these were brought into being with a word on your lips, and it was good. Amen. And now, please join me to sing hymn number 147, All Things Bright and Beautiful. little disciples oh my goodness today we are going to talk about one of the best Bible stories in all of the Bible and that is the one that we find at the very beginning of the Bible 
Have you ever heard the story of how God made the world and everything in it? Oh my goodness, it is such a beautiful story. It tells of how in the beginning there was just nothing. It was dark and there was chaos and there was water and land and everything was just all mixed up. There was really nothing that we can recognize now. But the Spirit of God hovered over the waters and God looked at all this and said, you know, I could make this beautiful. And didn't God make it beautiful? God made the sun and the moon and the stars and the sky and the earth and the oceans and the rivers and the lakes and everything that swims in it and flies in it and lives on it, the plants and the animals, fluffy kittens, cute caterpillars, beautiful butterflies, every single thing you can imagine. And as God made each thing, God looked at it and said, it is very good, right? Now, when God was done making all the other things in the world, God decided there needed to be one more special creation before God was all done. Can you guess what that might be? Yeah, God made people. And God made people extra special because God decided to make people in God's own image. Now, that doesn't mean that we necessarily look like God because let's be honest, we all look different, don't we? People come in all shapes and sizes and colors and come from all different places. Not, not two people look exactly alike, even if they're identical twins. There's little things that make them different. What it means to be created in the image of God is that we were created to be like God. And what is God like? God is love. God is good. And so if we are to be like God, that means that we were made to be loving. We were made to be good. Now, does that mean we never make mistakes, that we're always very loving people? Unfortunately, it doesn't. We sometimes do our own thing and we don't recognize God's image in us and we don't act very nicely towards each other at all. We don't take very good care of the earth like we should. I mean, we are not always our perfect selves. But what it does mean is that we have the capacity to be those things. God made us to be loving, which means that it's not hard for us to love if we try. And God made us to be good, which means that we want to be good. Um, even if we make mistakes, God built it into us to be good people. What does it make you think of when you think of other people being made in the image of God too? Yeah, that means that they are also good and worthy and special. And that means that we need to treat each other right. God made us out of love so that we can love. God made us to be good for the earth and good for one another. And we can do it because God will help us. Sometimes we're not so happy with who we are. We look in the mirror and we think of 50 things that we could change about ourselves. But how would it change for you to always remember that you were made in the image of God, that you are God's incredible masterpiece, and that you are special exactly the way you are? I think that would help us like ourselves a whole lot more, and it would help us remember to really, really love the other people that God so lovingly created too. Let us pray. God, thank you for making us in your image and help us to live into your image, to be the good and loving people that you created us to be. When we aren't so good and not so loving, forgive us and help us to get up and try again because you will be with us wherever we go and you will help us to be the people you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week, little disciples. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to come before God on this morning to lift our joys and concerns and share the prayers of God's people. Um, I encourage you to pray throughout this week for the people we lift up today. And if there is a prayer on your heart that you would like for us to, to pray for and with you, you can certainly let us know by emailing the church office or getting in touch with us. And, and we will be absolutely honored to pray for and with you. Please keep the following persons in your daily prayer. D and Cecil K, Connie H, Linda R, Stephanie, Penelope, Glenna S, Gloria W, Eddie M, Donna S, Terry and Debbie, Sally B, Mary B, 
Edward P, Mike and Bunny A, Joe B, Norma and John K, Tim C, Pat S, Chuck S, Shirley N, Alicia Anthony and Vincent J, Joe P, Lori H, Rick M, Ryan M, Russ L, Sally S. I also ask that you keep the family and the friends of Linda Mortak in your prayers. Lord, we lift before you all of those names that we just mentioned, and Lord, we know that you are in the midst, that you are caring and providing whatever is needed in this moment and every moment. We cannot even begin to ask before you've already begun to respond. Be with each person that we lifted up and hear the prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Creator God, in six days you created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. You lovingly created us in your image, calling us to bear your image in this world, to love as you love and to care for the world as you care for it. Lord, we humbly acknowledge that we are not always a beautiful reflection of you in our lives. Forgive us, renew us in your grace, and help us to live in ways that honor the divine image, not only in ourselves, but in the ways that we treat others. We pray for the nations of the earth on this day, O oh Lord. Give the leaders of the nations wisdom and grace to lead and serve their people in ways that foster thriving. Bring comfort and deliverance to those who live in difficult circumstances, who do not enjoy security and peace, who worry for their families and neighbors daily. Send us into this world as peacemakers and healers to be a balm for the wounds of the world for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your church, O oh Lord. Make us bold to bear your light into the world, to share hope and joy, to be a visible and tangible sign of your love for all people everywhere. Help us to find ways to reach out to our neighbors in love and humble service. Ground us in the example of your son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again for the sake of all the world. We pray for those whom we lifted up before you this day, and we lift to you the prayers of our heart. We commend these persons and these circumstances to your loving care and provision. Let them feel your presence, your healing touch, and your peace that exceeds all understanding. Give equal measures of strength and rest to those who work to care for and protect others. Help us, O Lord, to strive for balance in our lives so that we may take rest as you took rest on the seventh day. Bless us to be a blessing in your world. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whose name we gather, and whose prayer we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 1, and we will start at the very beginning and go to chapter 2, verse 4a. This is the Common English Bible. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, Let there be light. And so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening, and there was morning the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate the waters from each other. God made the dome and separated the waters under the dome from the waters above the dome, and it happened in that way. God named the dome sky. There was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky come together into one place so that the dry land can appear, and that's what happened. God named the dry land earth, and he named the gathered waters seas. God saw how good it was. God said, let the earth grow plant life, 
plant yielding seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its own kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its own kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days and years. They will be the lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with living things and let birds fly above the earth up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind, and all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. Then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife, and that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give to you all the plants on the earth that yield seeds, and all the trees whose fruit produces its seeds within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything God had made. It was supremely good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. The heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. On the sixth day, God completed all the work that God had done. And on the seventh day, God rested from all the work that God had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all the work of creation. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The story of God for the covenant people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Sing into our ears, O Spirit, the holy word of life. Tell us who we are and to whom we belong, so that we may live with gratitude for all that you have done. May your word come through me or in spite of me. Amen. As we start out this fall season, I can hardly believe that it is already the second week of September. We are going to have an incredible opportunity to spend some time in the Old Testament. And in our very first five week fall series, we're going to be exploring who God is, the great I am, the one in whose image we were created, the one who loves us beyond all reason and logic, the one who seeks to be in relationship with us even when our relationship with God is often rather messy. It is mind-blowing to consider that God chooses us, God walks with us, God stays patient with us through every moment of our lives, even when we are far from the perfect creation that God intended, this perfect creation that we read about in Genesis 1. When we look at the state of the world around us, when we look back at our rather stained history filled with moments and events that we would sooner forget, do you ever wonder if God regrets 
all of this. With a single word, God could very easily uncreate everything that God had made and simply just start over. But God has not done that, and I don't think God will. Instead, God has continued to be active and present in our lives in the world, declaring God's love for this world, broken as it may be, continuing to create and bring light and new life into the darkness and chaos of our human existence. This is enough to bring us to our knees. Thank you, God, for loving us so. I know that many of you are intimately familiar with this passage. Perhaps you've learned it several times throughout your life since you were just a little child. This story of how the world came to be is, a, is just a very important part of our story. And I pray that today the Holy Spirit helped you to hear it with fresh ears. Because this incredible account teaches us so much about who God is and about who we are in relationship to God. I think it's important to think about why it is that our scriptures start with this story. And it's not simply because this was the beginning. I mean, it could easily have started out with God's relationship with Abraham or how God called God's people out of Egypt. That's a great place to start the scripture story too. But it starts here where there was nothing, absolute chaos, a crushing sense of emptiness swirling about in complete darkness. But here, in this nothingness, there is a wind stirring over the waters, a spirit fluttering and moving a divine breath that has been from before time existed. God creates light first. I imagine it bursting forth and piercing through this crushing darkness and chaos with a blinding brightness, just so beautiful in the midst of this nothing. One after another, God creates order out of the chaos, brings forth life out of the formless emptiness, out of absolutely nothing. God creates everything. So here is the very first thing that we learn about God from this creation story, and this is why I think it starts here. God is the God of everything. God is the God of all. God is the God of all that was, is, and shall be forevermore. God is everyone's God. As each thing is created, we hear over and over that God saw that it was good. And this has far less to do with an aesthetic appeal, kind of like, oh, it's pretty, it's great, right? No, it's not so much that, although I have to be honest, <laughs> when I really take time to look at the things that God has created in this world, I am overcome by the absolute beauty of it, by the incredible complexity of flowers, insects, my dog, my kids, even ourselves at times. But this goodness that God sees in everything, the light, the sun, the moon, the day and night, Oceans, the land, the sky, the creatures that inhabit everything, great and small, the plants, and especially the people, may have far more to do with God's purpose for each part of creation. You see, they were each created for good, in order to be good, to do good. God infused God's own goodness into every single thing in all creation. And here is the second thing we learn about God in this account. God is incredibly good, and all that God made reflects God's goodness. But why did God create the world? We discover something of God's purpose in these verses as well. As God places God's own goodness into each and everything that God creates, from the tiniest blade of grass to the most majestic of mountain ranges, we see how God creates each thing for the good of something else. The earth, for example, we read in Genesis 1, is called to bring forth vegetation, and the vegetation will in turn feed the earth. The waters hold the fish, the sky holds the flying creatures of every kind. We now know, because of science that living things breathe out carbon dioxide and then the trees take the carbon dioxide that is our waste and that becomes what they breathe and they in turn breathe out the oxygen that we need to breathe back in it is this incredibly vast web of life interconnected and collaborating to continue to bring forth new life and possibility from that which God spoke into being in the very beginning nothing Nothing was made for the sake of itself, simply just to be there. 
but each thing was created for the purpose of collaborating to the thriving and abundance of everything around it. And then instead of fixing everything in place and saying this is how it will always be and nothing will ever change, God imbued all of creation with this dynamic fluidity and incredible flexibility so that life will win out. Even in those moments of chaos that still kind of erupts in earthquakes and floods and fires, God created an incredibly complex world, delicately intertwined but with a mind of its own. And then... There's a bit of a pause in the creation story. God looked around and saw how good everything was on the sixth day. And then it's almost as if God takes a breath of sorts because then God says, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth and all the crawling things on earth. Verse 26, humanity was the crowning glory in creation, the absolute expression of God's love for all that God had made. We are the only creatures that God created in God's own image. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2 verse 10 calls us God's masterpiece, and I think that is indeed true. God gives these humans that God creates all of us a special responsibility one that is also not given to anything else in all creation because God calls people to care for all that God had made, to be stewards over it, to carry on the task of loving and caring for the world even as God continues to love and care for it and us. We bear God's image out into the world with us, our good and loving God. Just as everything else was created to contribute to life and thriving for everything else, so are we. And so here we discover a third and perhaps the most important aspect of who God is. God is love. Out of love, God created the world. Out of love, God created humanity in God's own image to be loved by God and then to love God back. And because we are created in love, we are created for love, not only to love God, but especially to love one another and all that God has made. On the evening of the sixth day, God looked out over all that God had created, and this time God declares it supremely good. Did that stand out to you? And then on the seventh day, God rested. Now, why would God need to rest? God is God. I can't imagine God is tired you know, from doing all this stuff. And, I, and I, we know by looking at the world that God was not done creating, but yet God sat back and God rested. Let us take a look at what that might mean. God had put everything in place. And now God had turned the responsibility of some of this stuff over to the creatures. Care for one another. Continue to bring forth life and possibility. God had given us humans an incredible task to bear God's own image out into this world, not only to the creatures, but to one another as well. God rested because God had confidence that the goodness that God had infused into all things, the love that God had breathed into all things with every creative word and breath would be enough to sustain and nurture life and light, even when darkness and chaos still made their way into the world. God would, of course, always be present in the world, loving, sustaining, and caring for all things through every moment of, of existence. God would be present with the people whom God so loves to guide them and walk with them as they work to figure out who they are because of whose they are. God turned over the reins to the creatures so that when they loved God, it would not be because they had to love God, but because they wanted to love God, just as God chooses to love this world with such an indefinable, indescribable, boundless love. The grace of God is interwoven into the very fabric of our lives. The love and nurture that continues to bring light and into the darkness continues to bring order out of the chaos who is the source of our hope and joy, the assurance that we have an incredible, beautiful purpose on this earth. The creation story then 
is an incredible story of hope for those times when we find our lives turned upside down and inside out by the challenges of the world around us, by our own sin and the sins of others. For when we are bent low under our suffering, when we watch helplessly as others suffer, we know there is light shining in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. We know that the power of God is at work all around us to bring new life and possibility out of absolutely nothing. With the creation of the world, we now live within the rhythms of time, night and day, like right, it was evening and it was morning and it was evening and it was morning. We go from summer to fall to winter to spring. We are living within this rhythm. And finally, we know that nothing lasts forever because we live in these seasons, we live in this time. And this is true that especially the most difficult seasons of our lives, when, when we are in the barrenness of our winters, we know that life will spring forth when the winter passes. God rested and calls us to rest so that we can be able to take a moment to breathe to calm our frantic souls and to rest in the knowledge and hope that God is with us. I want to invite you to take time this week to marvel at all that God has made. When is the last time you simply stood and looked at yourself in the mirror? Stared at the intricate design of a flower? Marveled at the absolutely impossible beauty of a sunset or just let the soothing sounds of a lake or a river or an ocean just soothe your soul. Everything around us is a reminder of our incredible God who breathed divine breath and life into all that is made. This is the God who was, who is, and who ever shall be, steadfast in love, patient to pursue us all the days of our lives, seeking to gather us into God's beautiful and beloved community. Our relationship with God is messy at times, and our relationship with one another perhaps even more so. But we were created for and by relationship to God and one another. As bearers of the image of God, we are reminded that everyone we meet bears that image of God in them as well. How does this change the way we treat one another? Does it fill us with an overwhelming sense of love and compassion for our fellow human beings, no matter who they are? God made the world and all that is in it. And God loves this world with a love that absolutely defies explanation. So let us bear that love with us and care for all around us everywhere we go. Amen. May our spirits sing with God's spirit to affirm that all that God has made is indeed supremely good. Grant, O oh Lord, that what we have said with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Grace and peace to you, my friends. God be with you until we meet again.